Hi guys, in this video I'm going to teach you about naming ranges and naming cells. Okay, so this becomes quite useful when you're working with a spreadsheet quite regularly and instead of wanting to reference just a specific cell, you uh, want you can actually name that cell. So instead of this being cell B13, the cell that I'm on right now, being B13, I can call this cell something more descriptive related to my work. So, for example, this cell right here might be a supplier, and maybe I can call it SUP, short for supplier total. Okay? And I can, and so instead of it, this cell being B13 as we're normally used to seeing, I can name it subtotal and perhaps I should call it subtotal 1 to distinguish it from 2, 3, and 4. Okay, because we're going to name all those. And then I'm going to show you in a very simple illustration of how to refer to this cell. So you can see and then you can take this and use it in, in your application and your uh, whatever you may need it for okay so here it's just so we can build this skill of, of naming a range and naming a cell okay so let's do this so first of all let's get the totals so the totals I'm just going to use the auto sum function and just get the totals for each of these four suppliers that I have up here right so these are our totals and now over here I want to refer to these respective totals here. So for example I could just say equals and click on B13. So equals B13 gives me 189.7. But here I want to actually name this B13 subtotal. So the way you do it, subtotal 1. So you click on the cell that you want to name. You go over here in this area over here which up to now you probably have never used if you, if you haven't used it naming cells and ranges. You click in that box, it's the name box, and then you click in there and type in the name you want to give. You can't give any spaces, so subtotal 1, type it, and then hit enter, and you've named this cell. So see, I click on B15, and over here it says B15. I click back in what was B13, and now it's become subtotal. Okay? And then we can call this one subtotal. Two, hit enter. Call this one subtotal three, hit enter. And enter, you make sure you hit enter after you've done naming. Subtotal four, enter. Okay, so we've named our range. Now we go in here and we want, instead of B13, we're going to say equals subtotal. And you see over here in this list of suggestions all our named cells are over there okay so we can at this point double click or we can just finish typing subtotal one hit enter and I get what I wanted 189.7 okay next one equals subtotal two enter I get 239 as expected equals subtotal three same thing and equals subtotal four and we see that all these matched up perfectly. Okay, so that's how you name a cell. Sometimes you might also want to name a range, and this becomes useful mostly when you're using array functions. So for for in this video, I'm not going to go too far into array functions because that's quite can, can get quite advanced and probably requires a separate video. But we can go ahead and name a cell range. Okay, so here we name the cell, but now let's say we want to name this range from B2 to B11. So I highlight that cell range, and I can just call this sub1, let's say. Same way we entered the name for a single cell, we do for a range of cells. Hit enter, and actually what we ended up doing... was shifting to the right I, instead of hitting enter I hit something else so sup plier 
let's say one. Hit enter. Okay. So we've named this range of cells supplier one. Okay. So what can we do with that? When we highlight it, let's see, that name pops up over there as expected. So what we can do with this, just this is a brief introduction to an array function, and there's many array functions that require a range as an input. Okay, but let's say we want to actually we can use the count function or the sum function here. So let's say somewhere over here we want the sum of supplier one. So we can type sum and instead of highlighting this range what we can do is type in supplier one and we get the same value as we got when we sum the range B2 to B11 okay but instead of highlighting the range B2 to B11 we name the range B2 to B11 supplier 1 and enter that name into the formula instead of typing here B2 to B colon B11 okay and with an array function, just to briefly, because I talked about it so much, just to give a brief uh, display of how, how an array function would work here, we can highlight a similar amount of cells. Ideally, depending on what your use is, the same amount of cells as the range. Okay, And we can type, that seems about close enough, we can type equals and we can type supplier 1 okay and as you can see it's highlighted the entire range supplier 1 and instead of just hitting enter we can hit contr shift control enter and basically what we did was we referenced this entire range of cells and you see it just basically copied it down here and the last NA is because I highlighted one extra cell than the number of cells in this range. That's the only thing. But be sure to watch my video on array functions because this was just uh, because they become naming cell ranges becomes useful in those cases. But in this video, we learn how to name a cell and name a range. And that was our purpose. So I hope this was helpful. Be sure to check out my other Excel, Access, Math, PowerPoint, Statistics, and R tutorial videos on my channel. Subscribe. And make sure to click on our sponsors' ads. They keep these videos free. Thanks a lot, guys. Have a great day.